good morning. I'm about to run 105 and a half laps of Temple Newsham uh, racetrack here in Leeds on behalf of Sportshead to help the next generation. So what the bears do in the woods, we all know that. I had to do that. Did you find a rabbit? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to go commando yeah. after that, David. Right. So this ain't good, is it, for trying to break under four hours, really? <laughs> I've been oh, doing 30 good. miles at my ma marathon pace, right? <coughs> but the best bit was, when I come back, these three blokes start... There'd been nobody on the track. The guy who was doing the press-ups, he, he buggered off. So literally, it was just me running round, right? And then just as I come out of the woods and started thinking, oh, I'm still, a, you know, still a bit uncomfortable, but I have no underpants on now either. But whatever, <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? So I get back into my pace, think, well, obviously lost a lot of time, but it doesn't matter, I just finish now. So I changed my goal. The goal was always just to finish, but the goal was to <laughs> fall. So like, that's, that's probably gone, hasn't it? Unless I go nuts in the end. So as I just hit the track again, coming out, there was these three fellas appear in far corner, and they're like waving like that. And I'm like... <laughs> And I get past him and this bloke goes, Oi, it's you off the telly. Uh -huh. And I'm like going, when have I been on telly? What was that? Was Having that, a shit. I did that pilot thing I did years ago. <laughs> and then I remembered, I said the thing to BBC at nine o'clock. And he'd been watching the marathon coverage and they had loads of clips of what people were doing because there were 45,000 different people running yeah. in the marathon today, yeah. doing all sorts of crazy ass stuff, including me, right? Uh, but because I'm a pro, I had a microphone, didn't I? And I had it on a tripod. Mine looked great. Mine <laughs> sounded great. And I got the sun in the right place. David, you'd have been proud of me, right? The, the I saw you, mate. I yeah, saw you on BBC this morning. BBC, yeah, David. Yeah. Right. So it looked good, didn't it? Look good. Yeah. And I listened, and I know, I know it's all about sound bites, so I just kind of basically went, hello, I'm about to, my name's Steve, I'm about to do 105 and a half laps on my own of Temple News and uh, Racetrack on behalf of Sports Head and Next Generation, bye, and then ran off. Well, they used that clip. So these three blokes had seen it, living near Temple News, went, well, we'll go give him a bit of support. And the thing is, I didn't want it. The reason I didn't want all you there wasn't just social distancing, it's just, it's, I can't think of anything more boring than watching one bloke run round and round. Uh -huh. <laughs> we used to when we used to do the advertising for Porsche. We used to go to the uh, Le Mans 24-hour race because we did the advertising for Porsche, right? And after about ten minutes, you would, you know, the race starts at three and finishes 24 hours later at three. And after another like, ten minutes, we go, shall we go to Champagne Bar? <laughs> so watch cars drive yes. around. So, well, I could unless you're really nuts on cars, right? Well, I think watching someone like me run round, right, in that race. But there's a bigger problem with this, isn't it? Because I'm having to like think, well, I've got to kind of perform, like, you know, uh, keep to my pace, because I'm hitting them every bend, aren't I? So 400 metres, keep going, 400 metres, keep going. And I'm thinking, I do need to keep going, but not in the way that you <laughs> think. Because my guts are still going, I'm thinking, this is going to be, I think if I come around this corner, and the poo starts coming down my leg. I don't think you remember <laughs> Paul Lackley, right? It was really much like a Paul Lackley moment, right? <laughs> so they hung around for ages. And then another bloke turned and he went, can I run with you? And I'm going, no. And I was really, I think I was quite a beauty. I didn't go, no, look, is it? I just went, no, like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw you on I didn't realise you were like that. I went, no, look, listen, it's just I'm in my own headspace, you know, I'm just trained for it, but great. I'll go stand with them. So it's four of them applauding now, right? And I'm still running around trying not to poo myself. Um, <laughs> and then the, the guy who just turned up last is a running past. He went, anyway, what's this for? You're running on behalf for summer. So now I'm trying to explain what sports aid's all about. And I, it's taken me 26 shows to, to execute you on what it's about. And I've got like 10 <laughs> seconds as I go past. Well, sports aid, whilst I need to run an eight and a half minute mile and not poo myself. What's this? You put Next Generation. Oh, Next Generation, I used to like them with Bruce Forsyth. I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> he went, well, I don't know what it's for, but it must be a good cause for a nutter like you to be doing this to raise 10 quid. So no, <laughs> it's good in my hand. Which I'm thinking, David, that could come in handy later. <laughs> <laughs> We can use that, it. mate. We can use it definitely. Do you yes. still have your underpants? <laughs> I'll, I'll, too much detail. Come back to that. So anyway, <laughs> uh, it's still not too bad. Um, and then, fortunately, they buggered off, right? 
And then I did, I think, another five or six miles. And then I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to go back to the woods again. <laughs> and not the woods that I was performing in, John the Talker, if only, <laughs> but the actual woods this time. So I did. Um, so I had another little adventure there. So that cost me another whatever. <laughs> five minutes. And then thinking, well, at least those blokes have gone now. So if I do poo myself, <laughs> there's nobody here but me, right? But yeah, as I woods. come out, three women come running down the hill going, hello! <laughs> going, what? We've just seen you ages ago, but we've just been in pub or whatever. Thought we'd come in. And they, you know, they're a little, they're a little, how can I describe them? Pissed. Um, <laughs> well, put it this way, they weren't runners. They weren't runners. Um, and they had some interesting tattoos. But anyway, so they're like, we see you on telly and I'm thinking, and I felt like saying, are you going to give me some money like that lot? And they were there around long, long. And then another woman turned up on her own and she brought some water with her to give to me, which I thought was great, because by now, I needed water, not for drinking, really. <laughs> <laughs> Have a squirty um, nozzle on it. I know. So, <laughs> then she went, and then I knew family and friends, like I'd said to them, don't come too soon, because it will be boring. It will just be boring watching me run round and round. And, it, and to some degree, it'll put me off, because I'll have to I'll be just know you're there, right? So they're all really good. They all turned up at very times and then all buggered off to the cafe to have a coffee, which is what I told them to do, right? So I'm still running around my own. My mate Tom Marine, the monkey hanger, turned up. Uh, and I was a bit annoyed about that because I told people not to turn up, but he did. But thank God he did, because at least we got some photographs, because I had not thought of that. <laughs> when I get a moment, I'll post some on that there social media. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll put the video on if you don't see the, so you have to track it down on BBC and all that, right? Although it's quite good in context, because you see how professional mine is compared to what we're doing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Tom turns to a photograph, and he's having a fag, and I'm going, Tom, go to the cafe, right? <laughs> and then my wife, Candy, turned up, and then I'm having a... She's going, I've heard about the poo. I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? I <laughs> went, I'm fine. Wet how long have you got to go? And I'm going, do what? <laughs> to the, back to the woods, or... I said, I, I literally have no idea. Because I'm not being, being handed laps. I don't want to know. I'm just going to check. What I decided to do was check only when it got to just before four hours how many miles I'd done. So I ran for four hours. I mean, I had three visits to the woods. Um, I'm just sitting <laughs> on heart rate. Uh, thinking it's going to be really, this is going to, could be depressing this. Because who knows what, it could be 16 miles. And I've still got <laughs> 10 miles to do, right? Or it could be 17, right? Anyway, what blew my brains was, it was like over 20 whatever. Brilliant. In fact, I think it was 22 miles. So I had four miles to go, yeah. which I had to like walk and whatever. <laughs> so uh, the official time that I've just sent to Virgin was four hours and, and 30 minutes. That's still good, right? Yeah. Pretty shit. Right? <laughs> That's including 20 minutes of going to woods. <laughs> right. So if we wanted to be picky about it and take that out of it, um, oh, and here's the other thing. <laughs> it's the final thing that I should have added there, Curly, on, on uh, by uh, hindsight. So I've got I've got three things to set and think. Don't forget to do the London thing. And ironically, it didn't work. I've since found out one of the faults was if you're going around in a circle, it don't work. <laughs> oh, they could have told right. us that. They could have told us that, couldn't they? Right? No, the yeah. app didn't work, mate. I, know, I was thinking, like, he hasn't started. What's the matter with him? I was really worried about you. No, I was fine, but I couldn't stop and tell you, could I? But anyway, um, so what I've not done on Strava, thank God I had Strava, because that's what I've sent to him, because then we can get the medal and all that and <coughs> stuff. But that's not why we did it. But anyway, um, I'd set it to kilometres, not miles. And do you know how many kilometres are in 26.2 miles? Yep. Well, try and do, try, here's the challenge though, try and do the maths while you're running <laughs> and you've pulled yourself <laughs> and you've run 24 miles or whatever. Did it log all three poos? So I've not, no. So I've no, I, actually when you, <laughs> I might send you this, if you look on, if you know about Strava, you get like the details, we also get a, an image and what's funny, <laughs> you'll better see this round and round and round, and then it goes off like that. You better time them exactly, but I'm not bothering you. 
anyway, so I so I'm thinking, oh, this is a nightmare now because I don't know what 26. And I'm thinking, can you imagine if going by Strava, I stopped too soon? I've been gone through all this, and it just ended. I'd done 26 miles, not 26.2 miles. So I thought I better just keep running a bit longer. So point of fact. I did 27 miles today. <laughs> Always go an extra mile this show, right? I literally <laughs> did that, right? Um, and we might, the, 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 uh, one of our clients has said he might double it if I did it under four hours. Actually, if you take the uh, visits to the woods out and you take the extra mile I ran out, uh, I did it in just under four hours. Yay! Uh, here's, here's, the Brilliant. here's the epilogue, though, which I love. Um, and this is the whole point. Now, this is the whole point of it, really. Uh, I've literally just now thought, I didn't think to look, just check my email, whatever. And there's like a load of things going. Somebody's made a jo donation to just give in. And quite a lot of you made donations during this week and last night or whatever. Um, but this is like from this afternoon. I'm thinking who that is. And it was five people that I don't know. And they all left, left messages saying, we came and watched you running today. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well. Hey. And one said, I didn't keep see you running, but I, I liked the video on BBC, so I thought I'd send you some money. Brilliant. And between them, that all That's came to, I think, 120 quid. Yay. <laughs> wow. 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 I think the point I would make to you is, uh, this is the last show, but if anything shows you the power of getting your message out there, it's that. Because that was literally like a 15-second clip on the BBC. <laughs> And that got us yeah. 120 quid with no real big explanation about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what sports aid is, right? <laughs> so that says to me, for the next year, me, to start with, that media thing's massive, isn't it? And we need to just think about that. So we're going to retire this show. Some good news and some good news. We're going to retire this show for now, 26.2 show. Because it's 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 run the distance, it's literally. Twenty seventh. Yeah. <laughs> but we will be bringing it back whenever the actual marathon happens. Now we're told it'll be a year today. But hey, who knows? But it'll be a year today. If it's a year today, uh, and me and Candy will be running in that to top up what we've got for Sports Ed so far, we'll do that for another. We'll do it every night. We'll probably do it once a week or something in the run up to the marathon and then we'll we'll get the because I know you're disappointed that we didn't get through all of the stories. <laughs> so can always get our I think what's become the featured item, I think it's I can say with confidence amongst the audience the favourite item, the the uh, story will um uh, we'll get that out uh, at some point next year, right? Can um, it be called the wheel of going for a shit now? But listen, <laughs> I don't want, when he talks to other people, I don't mind. As you can see, I'm not that embarrassed about it. Just don't go telling everybody that. No, Just say no. you did it in four and a half hours. We don't need to know. <laughs> only you, only we need to know that. The worst bit, of course, not never, never mind social distance. The good news was, so uh, some um, uh, Sue and Clive were there, turned up uh, with their grandkids that I haven't seen forever, which was bloody marvellous. In fact, uh, they're, uh, the Hartleys are over there, right? Um, that was great to see those little girls, but I couldn't touch them, and they wouldn't have wanted to touch me, right? <laughs> they only made me a medal, but I gave a medal to one of their daughters because hey, <laughs> made that cardboard. Girl, oh, what are you thinking? I made him a cardboard um, medal covered I should in have done that paper. As a photo opportunity, really. I forgot to do that. Done that. It was just me now. Um, so it was bloody marvellous to see them. But thank God the social distancing, because otherwise, but of course, Candy and my daughter Megan are in my bubble, so they're like, I'm going. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> so I came on. I'm, I'm fully scrubbed down, cleaned and showered, and all the rest of it, right? So all's good, right? Um, so there we are. That's the adventure, really. Uh, and what I would say is, with all of that, um, is um, I f there were times, definitely, with the Kansas, because there was a moment when I thought, I don't know if I'd better finish this race. Not because I not because I haven't got the determination, not because I haven't got the training. It's just physically. Because it's obviously I'm losing a load of literally losing a load of liquid, you know, and it was red hot bizarrely, and then it was raining, it's red hot, and I think I'm gonna got to finish the race, and it's all right saying so you can crawl over the finish line, but you've got to be careful you don't pass out and all that, right? So there's a moment, and then, and I just thought I just got to reframe it, right, and not got obsessed about that. And I remember Leon, as a fan of my coach Leon, saying he'd retired from diving, and he took up running because he thought I don't like running, so I'll do it, right? 
<laughs> he ran the London Marathon the, just the year after he'd retired and did really well in it. What he doesn't, what, he, what I'm told you is he ran the London Marathon a second time in fancy dress. And he got overtaken. I forget who that ginger-haired sprinter is. Or he might be a long jumper. He got overtaken by him. Oh. And, he said, and he said, he let it get to me. And I thought, I'm not having him overtaking me. So I went after him hard and, and, and bollocks took my old plan and ended up coming in some stupid thing. And he said, I knew it was going to be bad. So I just reframed it in the moment. And that's why I reframed it in. Because it's not about you. That's one hell of an adventure today that it wouldn't have been if I'd just gone, oh, guess what? I did it under four hours. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got, to, you've got to reframe things. And if I was going to share, I'll reframe. Let's finish on a little fun thing. It's one of my favourite stories. I'll leave you with this, right? So reframing things. He's, he'll kill me because he's downstairs. So Finlay, who John Atavka knows very well. We're talking about John mentoring Finlay. You know, when he was into his magic, he could run that show. What, yeah. what, John might have heard me tell this story before. I don't think some of us others have. When Finley was about 11, he was doing that thing, you know, like kind of just moping around going like that, mm. like moping. And I was sat reading <laughs> evening paper and I knew he wanted me to say to him, Finley, what's wrong? What's wrong, son? But I thought I'll let him stew for a bit. So <laughs> went, going, I said, Finley, what, what's wrong? And he went, my life sucks. It's like 11, right? Oh. And his birthday is just coming up. And I went, how come? It's, it's, oh, it's just, you know, it's just got so many worries and concerns and things that have got me <laughs> down. I thinking, right. I said, tell you what, Finlay, do Dad a favour. Go write down on a bit of paper, like a letter, if you like, to me and Mum, all the things that are worrying and concerning you, right? And he went, do I have to? And I went, yeah, go on. I, I'm not I'm doing this with grown-ups. It's really good look. go on. He went, okay. So off he trot, and a few minutes later he came back. This isn't the actual original, but it's close to what I've, I've lost the original. So I came back with this letter, right, which I'll read to you to finish. It's uh, things that Finley was worrying about when he was 11, right? His birthday is on uh, the 1st of February, so it was just after, it'll date it, it was just after that, do you remember that terrible tsunami that they had? Yeah. And it was just yeah. after that, right? So things that were worrying Finley when he was uh, 11, number one, no clean glasses. But, <laughs> Finley, what do you mean? No clean glasses. What's that? So, you know, you can't find a clean glass in the house. It's not a clean glass to drink out of. And that's probably because they're all under your bed, aren't they? <laughs> Second thing, bad presents from relatives. I'm talking about you now, Susan Young. <laughs> Susan Young, I'm talking about you. <laughs> bad oh, you from relatives. Kill it. I said, what do you mean? It's you know, like Auntie Susan or Auntie Anne-Marie or whatever. They don't realise I'm right grown up now and they'll probably get me something for a kid. <laughs> five six, right? well, that's what I meant by bad presents. Right? Number three, the amount of homework I get, we'd expect that, wouldn't you? Uh, number four, how I am bored all the time. Can you please, underline three times, do something with us at the weekend? I'm feeling like super down now, super dad now, right, Tom? Right. At number five, uh, Tom being irritating. <laughs> That's his older brother. Number six, Tom calling me fat boy. <laughs> it's a specific form of irritation. Number seven, you like this one, John Natalka. No one showing any interest in my magic. <laughs> but now the thing is, I thought I was, but it doesn't matter what I think, does it? It's about David Shepherd can talk elegantly about this, but perception, right? It doesn't matter what I think. His perception is I'm not paying enough interest, right? Um, and on it, on it goes, right? And he's sort of running out of things to say. Uh, so number ten, note there are no pens in the house. I'm having to write this in pencil. <laughs> Scratching around now, isn't it? P.S. Is that only a quarter of my problems? <laughs> <laughs> so I went, that's good, that Finlay. Can you go now write a letter to mum and dad about things you can be grateful for? You know? And you're like, oh, do I have to? I mean, yeah, go on. So off we tried. Came back. It's a much shorter list. <laughs> but it's in biro, so at least it found a pen. <laughs> Things that Finley was grateful for when he was nearly 12. Number one, a loving family. Uh -huh. Number two, a nice house and possessions. 
Number three, not being dead in the tsunami. Fair enough. <laughs> Number four, being lucky to live in peace. So I said to Finley, did that just changing your focus, you know, on what you can be grateful for rather than what's missing, you know, what's good that's going on. Did that help change how you feel? And he went, yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. He didn't say that. He's 11. He went, that was a complete waste of time. Why did he make me do that? <laughs> and then off he went, still in a bad mood. But as far as I can say, he sat around. There's nobody here who's 11, right? <laughs> so the thing that Leon Taylor taught me particularly is, you know, you get... Oi, you stop talking about me. I'm here. I can see you. Oh, That's what I'm mentioning you. Oh. Yeah, um, Leon. <laughs> is that you get what we focus on, right? And so whatever experience you have, you can decide what narrative you tell yourself, like what happened to me today, right? You can decide what meaning to give it. Um, and I just believe, if, you know, if all those things haven't happened, then we wouldn't have got those extra donations possibly, you know, and all that. It's mm. just a chain of events, isn't it? It's just a chain of events. And that's kind of like my last word on it. So this is the last show off now. It's been absolute a ball. Oh, yeah, there's something else. A couple of other exciting things. <laughs> Stop press things. Me and Curly would definitely be doing something with the Covenant Club. Uh, I, I've been watching Tony Robbins all week, and they still haven't given me any clues on what that should be, so I'm going to have to figure it out for myself. <laughs> um, but we'll be doing something. But me and David Shepherd and Gavin Ingham are going to do a version of it. It won't be called um, Pace Setters, because that makes no kind of sense, right? Uh, David's original idea was call it, to call it the Three Tenors. Do you remember them? Yeah, <laughs> and we charge all you ten quid to come. <laughs> but I don't know if we charge you, but uh, so it might be called that. We don't know what it's going to be, do we, David? But we, what yep. we do know is it's coming soon. Yep. To a Absolutely. screen near you, to a Zoom near you, right? Me, David, and Gabbing, and it. But it, I think it'll probably be wantonly experimental. Well, it definitely will be, and I think it probably will be make it up as you go along. And I think it yep. definitely will be an element of I'll pass it to you, you pass it to me, and we see where we go. Because yep. between us, we've got like tons and tons of experience that sort of overlap and don't overlap. That I think we must be like in. over a hundred years between us now. Yeah, which is scary. <laughs> which is why you need to get running since you were seven, seventeen, whatever, David. Right? <laughs> Go down to the woods. So we've. So I think it's something that that knowing you quite well now, you will enjoy. You know, it'll be for everyone. It'll probably be though. It'll have to be probably eight o'clock again because it probably will be quite sweary. I'm thinking. Good. Probably. Uh, and one of the ideas, let me just float this idea past you, um, because you might not be up for it, but me, David, and Gavin are, we're thinking about doing an advent calendar. Yes. Where we do a show every day of December. Because I think if Christmas is going yes. to be cancelled. Pantomime, isn't it? It could be a pantomime, well, Leon. No, it isn't. Um, oh, and, no, not, and Leon will tell you, Leon, who's one of your favourite athletes of all time who made you, who was wishing to Thompson. Of yourself? Yeah, and what did he used to do that nobody else used to do? Train on Christmas Day. Yeah, so we're going to do a show on Christmas Day as well. Absolutely, I was going to say that. And yeah, I've, because... I've been running with Leon. Monster. I know, <laughs> I know. But... It's all um, true. You know, so just like the early times used to train on Christmas Day, and because Christmas is possibly be cancelled, me, David and Gavin thought, we might as well do a show on Christmas Day for half an hour. Right. So we'll do hey, that. Listen. I don't know if we should do it. We'll ask you. I don't know if we should do it before or after Queen's speech, or maybe during it. What's this space? You can get her on the same show. <laughs> yeah. What's this space for more information? Right, I'm going to go now because I'm the only one who's been stood up for half an hour. You've obviously. Congratulations. <laughs>